God gave me There's only we got a son That's how I survived in these dirty rotten slums These dirty rotten slums These dirty rotten slums God gave me There's only we got a son hey, yo, no Praise be Jesus Christ Now and forever How you doing my brothers and sisters of Christ Welcome to another episode of Sunday Readings with Charlie the Catholic This is a show where we dive into the scripture for the Sunday readings. You know, I like to tell people when we pray, it shouldn't be a monologue where we're the only ones doing the talking to God. You know, it should be a dialogue where we are attentive and listening to God speaking to us. And um, one of the ways that God speaks to us is through his written word. And that's through the Bible, you know. God speaks to us. If we have an ear to hear it, we could hear a message that he wants for you. You know, he wants everyone to know that he loves them unconditionally, right? No matter what, your sins or your faults, whatever they are, he loves you, you know? And also he wants a relationship with you. You know what I mean? How can you have a relationship with someone that you don't talk to or someone that you don't have a interaction with you know i have a relationship with my wife with my kids my mother my brother you know my father we all talk we dialogue and it's the same thing with a relationship with god we talk to god a lot of times we fall into this little temptation to make god out to be a genie where whenever we pray for him it's always asking him to grant us some wish or something you know but sometimes it's just to talk to him, to hear what he wants to say to us, or to talk to him, to thank him for what he's done for you. As long as you're alive and your heart's beating, God has a purpose for you, and his mercy for you is endless. Now, I'm going to say something that might sound a little off, but it's a reality when you look at it. But God's mercy has a limit. What do I mean by that, though? You know, as long as you're here alive, his mercy is unending. But once you die and you're brought to the particular judgment, you know, your chances to avail yourself of that mercy is over and you're going to be judged at that moment of your life, at the end of your life. And you have your particular judgment, you will be judged. But anyways, today is the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today's readings... We're going to get into um, God's definition of marriage. And our blessed Lord, he really establishes the undissolvability of marriage, the indissolvability of marriage that, you know, whatever God puts together, let no man take apart. So, you know, we're going to hear what our blessed Lord says about divorce and what he says about marriage in today's readings. I just want you guys to have an attentive ear and let's listen to them. Also, before we get into them, I'd like to say thank you to everybody who made a purchase on charliethecatholic.com. I'm very grateful. You know, my gratitude to everyone that actually made a purchase is, you know, indescribable. I'm, I'm so happy that you guys took the time to do that and show the support. You know, I've been told maybe I should do a Patreon or have a donate button, you know, for my, this ministry. But, you know, I figure... It, it, best way to support it is, you know, going to charliethecatholic.com and making a small purchase. Buy a rosary, you know, share it. Buy it for yourself, buy it for someone else. You know, I got these statues right here available online. Um, you know, at charliethecatholic.com, our slogan is wear your faith, share your faith. And um, thank you to everyone who's done that. Also, I'd like to thank everyone who subscribes, who likes, and who shares this. Is Without you guys... You know, I can't do it. You guys are amazing. And most of all, I'd like to thank all the particular groups that I'm in that allow me to share this in the group. All the admins that approve this show on their sh on their group, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate it. You know, I got exciting things. You know, we had a lot of good guests, you know, and I'm, I am want to let you know, guys know, you know, I got other plans for other guests to come on. But I also want to open up the platform for guests of you guys, my viewers, whoever's watching, you know, I want to know who are you and how did you become Catholic? Maybe we could set up a, a, a Zoom meeting where you could be a guest on Sunday Readers with Charlie the Catholic, you know, and then we could dialogue. 
and talk about the scripture readings for what for that Sunday. Well, anyways, that's just a brainstorm. If you if you're interested, send me a message and we could set some up. All right, so let's get into today's readings. Today's first reading comes from the very first book of the Holy Scriptures, Genesis. Tradition tells us that Moses is the one who wrote the first five books of the Bible. Uh, they call it the Torah, you know, and, and also in Genesis, there's so many directions you could go. You know, we could go into so many different topics within the first few chapters. Uh, you know, evolution, one of them. Is it figurative? Is it symbolic? You know, people could go into all types of directions. What we're going to do today, we're going to try to stay focused on the readings. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them, and whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In today's responsorial psalm, we're going to go to Psalm 128. Blessed is every one that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children, like olive plants round about thy table, behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children, and peace. Now in today's second reading, we're going to go into the letter of Hebrews. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but a lot of people think St. Paul wrote the letter of Hebrews. But we really don't know who the author is. It's an unknown author. But what we do know, that it's the word of God and it's God-breathed scripture. That we do know. Now, we also know, historically speaking, like I was saying with uh, St. James, the letter of St. James, Martin Luther did not like the letter of St. James. And likewise, with the letter to the Hebrews, Martin Luther did not like the letter to the Hebrews, along with the letter of St. Jude, you know, it's just, this is all could be research. I'm not making this up. I'm not pulling this out of the air. But Martin Luther wanted to remove not only the seven books in the Old Testament uh, that are the Deuterocanonical books, he also wanted to remove the letter of St. James, the letter of uh, St. Jude, and also the letter to the Hebrews. Why, you want to know? Because it's not compatible with his heretical teaching of faith alone. This is a heresy that comes from the pit of hell, you know? And Martin Luther saw the problems. He knew that this would not fit right. He, he figured, hey, he caused the letter of St. James a uh, straw that needed to be tossed in the fire. You know what I'm saying? Because he knew the letter of St. James was a blow to his heretical doctrine of faith alone. Okay, I'm sorry to go into that. Uh, again, let's get into today's second reading. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. But we see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. 
for it was fitting that he, for whom and by whom all things exist, in bringing many sons to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through suffering. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified have all one origin. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brethren. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we're going to get into today's gospel reading. May God give you ears to hear what our blessed Lord is going to say. And may we accept this like little children accept the kingdom. Let's just listen to what our blessed Lord says. I'll read it from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Pharisees came up and, in order to test him, asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? What did Moses command you? Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to put her away. For your hardness of heart, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. The two shall become one. So they are no longer two, but one. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. In the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter, and he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. They were bringing children to Jesus that he might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant. Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands upon them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is why man, man leaves his father and mother and becomes one with his wife. The two become one. You know, this scripture reading was read at my wedding, you know, because I found this in the letter to Ephesians. I found it first and foremost in today's first reading in the book of Genesis. You know, I also found it, our blessed Lord, he says it in Matthew, Mark, and Adam and Eve, let's go into Adam and Eve. You know, a lot of people want to know, is Adam and Eve actual historical figures, you know? And I'm inclined to believe by my faith that yes, they are our first parents. There was actually, there is actually a man, Adam, who is the first of our parents. And I believe what scripture says, his wife was Eve. Is crucial because the connection between original sin and the meaning of the gospel, the good news, you know, Adam and Eve, our first parents, they were made in the image of God. And Eve came from Adam's side, from his rib. You know, she didn't come from above him to be above him. And she didn't come from below him, but from his side, you know, the two complement each other, man and woman. It's like the great comedian said, George Carlin. I know you probably never think you hear him being quoted on a Catholic show, you know, especially how hostile he was towards Catholics, being that he was a Catholic himself. Pray for his soul, may he rest in peace. Um, he said, boys got something for the girls and girls got something for the boys. Anyways, Adam and Eve, they're equal. They're, they're you know, they're flesh of the flesh, bone of bone. In Hebrew, Adam means man or the term will be human, human being. And God created man out of dust. You know, God created us out of dust and from dust we return. You know, when you look on the ceiling fans or go from behind a refrigerator or on your bookshelf and you grab that dust, you know what dust is actually? It's microscopic dead skin cells. So 
It's actually, we're made out of dust. And from dust we came and from dust we returned, you know. And God didn't create us to die. When God created Adam and Eve, he created us in a perfect state of grace. You understand what I'm saying? It was paradise. They were in the Garden of Eden and they had no sin. They were created not to die in the image of God. Now, if you're in the image of likeness of God, you're supposed to be eternal and live forever. But God told them that, you know what? You can have everything. You can have everything. But if you eat from one tree, this one tree, you eat from it, you will die. You know, and um, I'm sure all you guys know the story. They did die, but God didn't create us as robots. So a lot of people are like, well, why did he do that? If he knew they was going to do this, if, if he knew they was going to eat from the tree, all knowing God, why? You know? And this is my, my attempt to, to take a crack at that. God created us not as robots. He created us because he loves us, but he wants us to love him in return. You know, he didn't create us and force us to love him. I can't force my kids to love me. I mean, sure I can. I could bribe them. You know what I'm saying? I could bribe them and, and, and make them love me, but... It's not real love, but when my kid comes up to me on their own or, or and they say to me, Papi, I love you, you know, without me telling them or coercing them or bribing them, they do it on their own free will. It's so much more, uh, uh, so much more value to it, you know, and that's what God wants from us. He wants us to love him out of our own free will. He wants us to freely choose him. You know, God created us without our will, but he won't save us without our will. He's not going to force his salvation on us. You know, there's a doctrine out there where people think, you know, God predestined some people to be damned. Like, they think God created someone, you know, and that their purpose was to be burned and damned in hell. And that's not, that was not God's. God created everyone in his image and likeness, no matter your sin. And God created everyone to be with him forever. You know, that's the purpose, to know God in this life, to be with him forever in the next. God created us out of love. God wants us to love him back. We're not robots. We have a free will. So God knew. How do we show God we love him? By obeying him. By obeying him. By If you love me, you'll listen to me. You'll listen to my commandments. Right? And when Adam sinned, that sin. That original sin was passed on to his offspring, which we are his offspring. We are all his offspring. And in our blood is sin. We're born with original sin. That's why the necessity of baptism is crucial because baptism washes away the original sin. Baptism washes away the original sin, but then we still fall because we have concupiscence. On this, on this side of the grave, we still sin. And how do we get our sins washed away? In confession. And when we go to confession, our sins are washed through the blood of Christ. So sin's in the blood and is washed away through the blood of Christ. And also we see that God created the universe, right? And he defines what is what. And this is that. You know what I'm saying? God defined what's the universe. God defined what is marriage. God created the universe. We cannot redefine what God created. God created marriage between male and female. We cannot redefine what God already created. And we see that when God created marriage in the beginning, he didn't intend it to be separated. You see, we cannot redefine what God already established. If God says it's between male and female, who am I to say, no, it's not? You know, God created Adam and Eve. He didn't create Adam and two, three other women, you know. He didn't create Adam. You know where I'm going with this, you know, without going anywhere too sensitive. But we cannot redefine something that God already defined. We cannot redefine truth. You know, there's something that's called objective truth. No matter how much my feelings, you know, say or how much I want to change a reality, I can't. I can't change truth. Truth is objective, something that exists outside of me without my knowing, without my will, without anything I have to do with, you know, this exists outside of me. It's a truth. This is what God established and God 
who Jesus Christ is truth manifested, truth personified, truth himself. He says this. Let me give you an example. You know, a lot of you may know, you know, when I'm asked how many kids I have, without skipping a beat, I say seven kids. You know, I have seven kids. Yes, I'm a father. I'm a married man who in my household has seven kids, right? Some of them are grown. A lot of you don't know this, but the reality is that, you know, my three oldest kids, they're actually my stepkids, you know, and, and I acknowledge them as my real kids. I don't say that when, whenever someone is introduced to them, I introduce them as my kids. I don't say it's my stepson or my stepdaughter. You know, these are my kids. I identify them as my kids. But no matter what, how much my feelings are, how much I identify them as my real kids, biology doesn't care about my feelings. There's a truth that exists outside of me that I can't change, no matter how much it hurts me. You know, it's fine. I got to accept truth because, you know, I'm not delusional. And if you don't accept, I'm not going to run around saying, hey, if you don't accept what I feel, then you have some type of phobia towards me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to do that. That's the wrong route to go. But this is a thing that exists outside of me. And it doesn't make me love them any less or any more because guess what? They're my kids. They're going to be in my will just like my other kids are. You know what? I raised them. I'm more... I'm not going to go there. I'm going to just say this. You know, my stepsons, they don't remember their mother being with someone else. All they remember is me being in their life. I raised them since they were young. Now they're young, grown men. Those are my sons, you know. But there's a reality, you know, when they sign their last name, they have a different last name. The blood that goes through their vein is not the same blood that goes through my vein. That's a reality that I'm not going to go and try to make you accept my you know, my wish or what I feel because there's something that exists outside of us that's objectively true. And we got to always know that truth, no matter what, will set us free. And the truth is something that, you know, it's not a bad thing. Truth is not bad. Truth is a good thing. Jesus tells us that the voice is no good because in the beginning when God created, remember I'm telling you, he created a male and female, but he created where that one man and one woman become one body. You know, the two become one. And he did not intend for them to separate. In Deuteronomy 24, Moses is the one who allowed this. You know, he allowed this for the hardness of their heart. And I want you to think about this. There's a lot of denominations out there that, here, here's an example. The Orthodox, they allow people to get three divorces. You allow three divorces, right? I, I don't know how. Whatever, I don't I, I don't want to go open up that can of worms, but, you know, that's not what Scripture says there. You can't have three divorces. Also, in Protestant denominations, you got countless divorces. A pastor could be on his third wife. You know what I'm saying? But in the Catholic Church, we, we listen to our founder. He says, marriage is indissolvable. You know, God created marriage between man and woman. And that's why I'm saying... I'm bringing this up about the whole divorce thing is when you're married in the church, in the eyes before God, that's an authentic marriage. It's called a holy matrimony. And a lot of people get married in the court or civil marriage. That's not in the eyes of God. That's in the eyes of the government. So now you're putting the government above God. You want the government's eyes to see you and your lady married. But the eyes of God, you don't care. Whatever. But... Uh, marriage in the church is a holy matrimony which cannot be separated. I wonder, a lot of people, wait, wait a second, they're probably wondering, didn't you just say you had stepkids? So then that means your wife had uh, was in a previous marriage. Well, yeah, you're right. And guess what? She was married, thanks be to God, in the civil court, which was not in the eyes of God. Now, if you were married in the church and there was not a valid, an annulment, a valid annulment, that's a marriage that is in the eyes of God. And no man could separate it. Me and my wife were married in the church. We had a holy matrimony. So that's how that came about, if anyone was wondering. <laughs> not that anybody was wondering, but that's just the way God created it. You're not supposed to be getting divorced. And our Lord nails, you know, two current questions with one answer. He defines marriage as a male and a female. 
and the two become one. And he also defines it as what God has joined, let no man separate. You know what I mean? All right, so, but now I just want to let everyone know these are things that, I, you know, this is scripture. I'm not, I'm just a messenger. I want you to hear what you're saying. What's the message God's telling you? And also I want people to know that you have to walk by faith, right? So I want you to know that hating anybody is a mortal sin, no matter what. If God loves them, if they're still alive and their heart's still beating, no matter what their state of life is, God loves them. His mercy is open to them. If God loves them, who am I to hate them? You know, yeah, we could call out the sin and say what God says, but we also have to be loving and we cannot shun nobody. We cannot have any hatred towards someone. It's just, it's wrong. We have to welcome everybody and, and, and encourage them to take up their cross. You know, Jesus Christ said, if you're going to follow me, you must deny yourself and take up your cross. And we all have crosses. We all have custom crosses that are fit to us, to you. There's a cross, a particular cross with your name on it. And we all have a different cross, right? Bear your cross. Take up your cross. Deny yourself and follow Jesus. Anyways, I'd like to thank everyone who watched the show and everyone who likes and shares. I'm very grateful again. Please go to charliethecatholic.com and God willing, I'll see you next week. And let's work on getting to see more guests for the show. Bye. Love you. God gave me his only begotten son. Hey, yo, no matter what I'm in, he's my Lord, my friend, my savior, who died for my sins. And truly we need him. They brutally beat him. Until he was bleeding, until I would see him, then I would believe him. He was born of a virgin to the thorns he was wearing, and I swore I would serve him, but I slacked off.